Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The use of uh, PET in the assessment of response in Hodgkin lymphoma is still emerging um, as a tool. So I think we've learned a few things about its use over the last few years for sure. Number one, as an initial staging tool, it's probably the most reliable and most sensitive test that we have. And in fact, the most recent uh, Lugano staging classification system for the lymphomas has recommended that in Hodgkin lymphoma, if a patient has a CT PET, there's no longer any need to perform a bone marrow biopsy. So that's actually been quite an important step forward from a patient perspective, at least, that it's changed our staging um, paradigm for this disease. From the point of view of response assessment, I think that there uh, are a couple of things that we know for sure. And I think there's a lot of information that's still emerging right now. What we know for sure is at the end of treatment, the um, PET response is a very useful uh, prognostic indicator. So, in other words, if a patient has a negative PET at the end of their primary therapy, that has a positive predictive value of about 80%, or I should say, excuse me, a negative predictive value of about 80%. In other words, if the PET's negative, there's an eight, a roughly 80% chance that that translates to a, uh, a long remission and probably cure. If the PET's positive, it's somewhat less reliable, so the positive predictive value of the PET is not quite so strong as the negative predictive value, but nevertheless it has prognostic significance. The big question is how do we use that information either at the end of therapy or as an interim, so during therapy, to direct our treatment. So there are clear data that if you perform a CT PET scan after two or three cycles of chemotherapy or even after one cycle of chemotherapy, that the PET has prognostic significance. In other words, if you perform a PET after two cycles of chemotherapy and the PET's negative, there's a high probability that that patient is going to go on to be cured uh, versus a patient who has a positive PET. So the question is, can we use the PET scan, the so-called interim PET scan, performed early on in the course of the treatment to change our treatment? If the patient has a negative PET, could we actually reduce the amount of treatment we're going to give that patient? And if they have a positive PET, can we intensify the treatments in the hope that we can overcome any resistance they're demonstrating to the therapy? The short answer to those questions at the moment is we don't know. A lot of the current studies are using an interim PET to decide whether or not to upstage treatment or not. So for example, in the United States, our standard therapy for advanced Hodgkin lymphoma patient is ABVD, okay, which is well tolerated and has a cure rate up to 70%. However, in Europe and Germany, they like to use a regimen called escalate Bayakop, which is much more intense. Uh, the response rate is a little higher than ABVD, but it comes at the price of added toxicity, such as heme toxicity, infertility, and risk of secondary cancers down the line. So the big United States study that was done, um, the data is not out yet, but the trial has finished accrual, is that they're taking all comers with advanced Hodgkin lymphoma patients. <clears throat> they will get two cycles of ABVD, then they will get an interim PET scan. If you're PET negative, then you would just finish out your normal six cycles of ABVD total. However, if you're PET positive, you would change from ABVD to Bayer-Cop regimen. Okay, so a more intense regimen. But also there's now some strategies to use the interim PET to guide therapy, at least in patients with early stage Hodgkin lymphoma. So we would give certain numbers of uh, chemotherapy, do PET scan. If PET negative, you can then use chemotherapy alone without radiation. And if it's positive, you can use a combined modality. For example, one approach is referred to, to the rapid uh, trial uh, approach, which was reported uh, about a year ago from the uh, UK, where you take patients with stage 1 and 2 disease, non-bulky, uh, 
and then treat them with three cycles of ABVD, then do PET scan. If the PET negative, you give one more cycles of ABVD and stop, meaning that four cycles of uh, chemo with no radiation therapy. If the PET is uh, uh, positive after three cycles of ABVD, then you would give uh, four cycles of ABVD plus radiation therapy. So there are some emerging treatment strategies incorporating interim PET scan to guide therapy, at least in the early stage disease. The question of whether FDG PET scanning can be used um, as a, a prognostic indicator immediately prior to transplant is another important question. So the concept here is that a patient with relapsed Hodgkin lymphoma undergoes their salvage therapy, which is the standard cytoreductive therapy that they will receive prior to autologous stem cell transplantation. And the question is, if you perform a PET prior to the transplant, but after the salvage therapy, is that predictive of subsequent outcome? There aren't many data, but the data that are out there at the moment suggest, in fact, that it is very predictive. The Memorial Sloan Kettering data uh, by Dr. Moswitz showed that when you take someone to a transplant, the disease status at the time of transplant affects the outcome after transplant. For example, in their study, patients were, had a PET scan before the transplant and after the established chemotherapy. If they were in PET, if they were PET negative after established chemotherapy, meaning they're in complete remission, they're going to have a much better two-year uh, progression-free survival after the transplant. Whereas if you're still PET positive after you salvage chemotherapy, you're going to have a worse long-term outcome even after your stem cell transplant. It may be 40% instead of 80%.